from what I've read, the anthropological literature, any given hunter, even if he's the best hunter in the tribe, has an overwhelming probability of failing at any given hunt. And so what the men do is they distribute the spoils of hunts across multiple hunts. And it's generally incumbent on the best hunter, especially when he has a successful day, not to take the best cuts for himself and also not to claim credit for the hunt, to distribute the best cuts and to be humble in his claims. And I think the reason for that, I think this is a very compelling idea fundamentally, the reason for that is, well, you want to have a bunch of guys to hunt with all the time. And if you turn out to be not only highly skilled, but also like generous to a fault, people are going to be thrilled to go out and hunt with you because everybody wins. And that's a really good long-term game. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I always, the example I always use is, you know, in, in sports, it, going back to football, if I'm a quarterback and I win and I get on TV and say, yeah, I won because I'm awesome. I'm the best there is. The next game, my front line is going to let the defense in and I'm going to get slaughtered. And so, and so the next time I win, I'm going to say, I, I want to thank God and my, and my offensive line. They're the best they have. Those guys are great. And I'm going to give the status and the glory to them, and they're going to help me next time. And we're going to set up a virtual, a virtuous cycle where I, I don't get to be a super, I don't get to brag as much, but I'm, I win and I get all those benefits and, and I get more than if I took the credit basically, because in the long term, I win. 